Quit playing and get started. <laughs> hey, welcome everybody. It's been, uh, been one week. One week ago today. And here we were. Lots happened in one week. Yep, Roger tried to kill himself. So, if you're here, you're probably friends on Facebook. So you probably know this, but there's probably some people that don't know this. So, one week's passed. And within that week, I, I, I. Pray for my sanity. So, <laughs> uh, I'm, I walked outside. Here I am, minding my own business. Just walking outside. Do it every day. Decided to walk to a little part of the yard where we, we don't walk a whole lot over there because it's usually the sprinklers, they spray a little too much over there. It's usually slick, but whatever, no problem, I got it's, it. I'm just, wait, did you catch that? Usually slick. Usually, yes. okay. It's but always I'm just walk slick. By. Here I am, minding my own business. I'm going to walk by, and uh, next thing you know, my feet slip, and here I am, parallel to the ground, but about, I don't know, this far off the ground, parallel, heading down. I've had enough calculus to know that I'm accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared, and it doesn't seem like very far, but that was enough. And he's not floating like a feather either. Oh no. I'm... <laughs> so, man, I hit harder than oh, I have ever gosh. hit in my life. My head bounced. Man. No, it did not bounce. I heard it thud the from good inside news, the house. The good news is, I saw new birds flittering around. I saw Were birds, blue birds I've never seen before going around. <laughs> no, the good news is Levi was here. That's the good yeah. news. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So Levi and and Rhonda dragged me back in the house. And, and uh, I mean, I'm, we ended up at the emergency room. And, and it's, I cracked my skull and did this and... So it's been, when was that? What day was that? It was that? Tuesday. All right, so we're, it's been about you, five days. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm going to live, but I'm, it's going to take another few weeks just to get back to the, how messed up I was before that day. So, aye, aye, aye. And so. So if you thought my nerves might have been shot before that, with Raj being in the hospital, all that stuff. Okay, they're really shot now. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. So I got some real vertigo going on. I'm still dizzy, and of course, I don't know how long it's going to take for my elbow. But anyway, I was, you know, I was, I was saying, okay, what did I do? Why is this happening to me? What did I do? And I was, you know, more, you know, joking about it. Or, um, and a friend of mine, he said, well, I know what you did. He said, you keep singing that "Bring It On" song. <laughs> And we had, we had just sang it. We did it, Peter. <laughs> we had just sang it. I'm all, okay, it's out there. Bring it on. You know what? I'll bring it on. Okay. I'm not going to sing that song anymore. We will not sing that song anymore in 2020. I get it. So if not we do, I was thinking, well, maybe we could, you know, I sing the part, you know, the D, bring it on. And then Rondo, whoever sings back, bring it on. So I think next time, if we do it at high, find yourself to want to do it again in 2020, I'm going to sing, bring it on, and they're going to sing, some exclusions may apply. <laughs> One event per year. Some exclusions <laughs> may apply. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. So if you don't know what we're talking about with this song, just watch last week. <laughs> scroll back and you'll see us singing, bring it on, and uh, you'll get it. So I probably will not be singing that anymore in 2020. So just let me just coast. Mercy, just let me coast to the end of 2020. I don't want to have to bubble wrap. I don't want to have to wear a helmet. I well, wanna... Tristan and I have been talking about putting you in a home, so. I don't want that. <laughs> I, I'll try harder. Tristan's pushing hard. <laughs> I, I bet. <clears throat> well, so with that, of course, you know, I'm, it's, I even I'm got such vertigo now and dizziness, it's hard to walk, so I've been sitting around. What does that mean? You know what it means. I've been sitting around thinking. And one of the things I was thinking about was just how I've never like felt like I fit in a box. You know, I was remembering even from the time I'm a kid, you know, on the farm and you know, just farm kids do this. And we did. Except for me, I would 
a little different, you know. And, and I remember one time when I was about 16 and I had driven over to pick up a, <clears throat> another farm guy. We were going to go do something. We got in, a, in my truck and I had a book in there and he, he got in there and grabbed this book. What is this? I said, it's poetry. <laughs> and he's all, poetry? Like he was disgusted that I had a poetry book in there, you know. And he's like, what, what? You know, it's a little poetry, man. You know, John Don, Edgar Allan Poe, you know. And I listen, he's like, who's that? I'm like, well, the rest of the way, he, he opened it up. And he was just like reading stuff from it, all disgusted. And so, you know, it's like, fine, boy. But, you know, I love, love poetry. And so it didn't quite fit in that box. And, um, you know, even now it's like, well, look, he wears a cowboy hat, but yeah, he got long hair. Yeah, well, he's a cowboy, but yeah, how much a hippie is that? So just never, never quite fit in a box. And and, and so then I got to thinking about Rhonda, and uh, Rhonda does not fit in a box either. And uh, I enjoy people trying to put Rhonda into a box. And uh, I'll watch it come along, and here's Rhonda, and then they'll decide we're gonna put Rhonda in that blonde box. And I just step back, I'm gonna watch this, see how this works out. Cause, you, know, the, but you know, the whole blonde thing. And then of course, Rhonda's probably the, the smartest woman I've ever been around. And so I like watching that unfold. But here's my favorite. When someone tries to put Rhonda in this box, it's like <laughs> when they tell her something like, hey, 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 let, let me do that. That's man's work. Okay, when that comes on, I don't just step to watch, I step back. To watch and if I had a quarter for every time I've seen that and Rhonda's like oh bull <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like ay 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 so, mm. that's fun Rhonda doesn't fit <laughs> Rhonda doesn't fit in a lot of boxes no. so, but you don't either I mean that's a thing you know we all kind of get we end up in a box and we just you know we didn't make it so it never fits and <clears throat> So I was thinking about that, and then I started thinking just in more in general, just about, well, what boxes that I mean? You know, I'm in a box at work, you know, that's a box. Does it fit me perfectly? No. Nope. Um, we're in a box at our church. Does that fit me perfectly? Mm. Nope. No. I mean, it's not, and I know that does fit some people. You know, although this is perfect for me, I'm, I believe every single thing about this and this denomination and you know, this particular church or whatever, I'm, I'm 100%, it's perfect. And I see that quite a bit. It's never been for me, and I don't think it's ever no, been for me either. So, so we're in all these boxes. And and this week, the reason I was thinking about this, you kind of feel boxed in. You know, and it's like, well, <clears throat> this doesn't fit me perfectly. And so I need to find another box. I need to leave this box that doesn't fit. And go and find another box that fits me better. And that's kind of, I think, human nature. But remember now, this whole thing we've led up to here with however many weeks. We're trying to change the world. Okay, That's why we're sitting here talking. And so, with that in mind, you know, my thought was, well, I just need to get out of this box. Because this box has me boxed in. And I need to go find another box that fits me better. And that's a good plan. And then, and then this happened. So <laughs> now that we've kind of been kind of home all the time, and, you know, we don't go out and shop a lot of stuff. So just, just one minute ago, it's Sunday, the Amazon driver just already showed up on a Sunday and dropped something off. I saw him outside the window. So we're going to get packages just about every day. And so we were... So all this stuff is going through my mind, and then, I don't know, a couple of days ago, we get a, a little delivery of something, a little box of something, and so Rhonda takes it out, and, and then she does what she always does. As soon as she opens it up before the box goes to the recycling, she throws it on the floor so that the cats can get in it. <laughs> and if you've got cats, you know, you put a box on the floor, that cat is going to get in that box. Doesn't matter yep. how big it is, how or small how it small. is, That's right. what size it is. And so we were, I don't know what I was doing, but so Rhonda had put the box down there and then 
couple of minutes later, I hear it rustling around. I look down and saw our cat, Callie. She had got in the box. Okay, it was a square-ish box and about this big. Our cat's about this big, but she managed to get in it. So she got in the box and she turned this rectangle-ish box into a circle. And she was in it and she was content. And then it dawned on me. That's the message right there. That's what she, okay, this is where it gets deep here. We're going to change the world. Um, stay with me. <clears throat> the cat influenced the box far more than the box influenced the cat. The box didn't influence the cat at all. Callie got in there and made the box fit her. And I think that kind of hit home with me. You know, that we all do that. I need to go out. I need to leave and um, find a box that fits me. And like, well, maybe that's not the case. Maybe, now I'm going to back up a few weeks. Remember when we talked about um, Esther, that everything in our life has led us to this moment. So maybe here we are. Everything has led us up to this moment. That we have all of these experiences. And we're in this box whether it's your work, your church, whatever. And now is the time to stay in that box and influence the box, not leave, find another box that fits better. Maybe we are where we're supposed to be in this box that doesn't fit. And then we're going to influence the shape of the box. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you, I'm sorry. Go ahead and, uh, Call me or text me and we can talk about it more. But Well, can I put it in some different terms? Please, please do. <laughs> Outside of a cat in a box. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. But yes, please. So the box is going to be the foundation, obviously. And you're not going to ch change the foundation of things, but you can change the shape of how things happen. And, you know, I've seen many times where people leave a church because that church doesn't fit them perfectly. And I think God plants you where you are for a purpose. And sometimes you need to change the shape of that church instead of saying, there's a problem at this church and I'm going to be part of the problem, so I'm going to leave. But I'm saying, and you're saying, don't be part of the problem and leave, but be part of the solution and stay. And if you can help change the problem that you see, I think we're all going to be able to be a lot better off. And your church is going to grow because you've decided to stay mm -hmm. and make it something different than what it is. We all go to a place for a purpose. But if we leave because the church doesn't conform to what we think it should be, then the church is never going to be what it's supposed to be. So I'm saying stay at your church and make the changes that need to be changed. So therefore, your box is your foundation, but it does not have to be a square. It can be a circle, it can be a rectangle, it can be a hexagon, and you need to help shape the box. That's good, right there, that's, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about a cat in a box, but really I was talking about that right there. So. <laughs> Well, thank you. And so that, so, you know, uh, um, maybe think about, I know everybody's heard this, but you know, we're all, we're always quick to this church doesn't fit me. I'm out. I'm leaving. Yeah. You know, they, they sang this song. I don't sing that kind of song. I'm out. You know, they did this. So I'm going to find another church. And, and so it reminds me of, of this story. It's kind of a joke, but I'm sure you've heard it, but maybe some people haven't, but anyway, as a, guy um, ended up shipwrecked on some you know deserted island and he's out there for 25 years by himself and then finally he gets rescued and the people show up and you know they're talking to him you know he's got the long beard you know all this typical stuff and they say when they point over what's that it's kind of a shack he says, that's my house oh okay what's that he said oh that's another shack he says that's my church he said, what's that over there? He's like, that's the church I used to go to. So he went by himself. He's already, 
change the shirt. So anyway, uh, don't be that guy. Um, yeah, don't be that guy. Be the one that makes a change, yep. a needed change. Yep, says I'm going to stick this, it out. I'm in this box and uh, I influence the box. So. Yep. <clears throat> so a cat sent that message around from there to here to there. So cats. The cats are talking to him now. <laughs> they don't used to only talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> and for we've came through all of this. Yeah. Uh, oh man. It's a point where they're even talking to me. <laughs> All right, so we're going to play a couple of songs. Um, the first one is called Uncloudy Day. So, you know, all of this stuff, and the reason I picked this out of the Gospel Jam music was because, man, I'll tell you, this is tough stuff right now, you know. Um, the whole world's just in a tough spot, and all of us, but this song kind of reminds us, yes, it is, but it won't always be that way. And uh, the whole... Everything about this song is uh, someday, you know, there, we're going to be in that. We're not going to have those clouds hanging over us. So. <clears throat> so if you know it, sing it with us. We didn't really get a chance to practice it, and, but I think we're going to be all right. I know we've, we've done it at Gospel Jam a few times, right? guitar and yep. Terry too and then all the backup harmonies as well. 
boy, this would just be a great song with all everybody from Gospel Jam. But you got us. So, so this morning we, um, I went and got the, the percussion bag, which is what Rod does. And I realized how much I lean on Rod during all the stuff. And yep. He never gets any credit, but man, you know what the percussion brings to these songs. We had the shaker and we're kind of messing around with it. And, and uh, I remember when the first time I met Rod, uh, he was... <laughs> It was Christina's boyfriend, and Rhonda told me, hey, that's Christina's boyfriend over there. You need to go over there and introduce yourself. I thought, I'm not going to go over there and introduce myself. And she said, it's Christina's boyfriend. You need to go introduce yourself. Yeah, okay. So I went over there, and hey, I'm Raj. And he goes, oh, hey, I'm Rod. And then he said, I'm a percussionist. I was like, what? I didn't know what it was. But it didn't sound like something you need to be like, telling people about yourself you know I'm like oh so I found out later that you know it's the tapping on stuff and doing stuff and timing and so he's been the percussionist for the gospel jam for a long time so, so anyway uh, poor Rod but yeah but I was kind of <laughs> percussionist <laughs> anyway hey Rod I know you're watching this I I miss you and, you too <laughs> I appreciate you. So. <clears throat> All right, we're going to try it. We're going to try it. Jesus, 
where you're like, I've had it, I'm leaving, I'm getting out of this box, I'm going to find a new box that fits me. Just at least think it through. Take the message from the cat. Don't conform to the box, but help the box conform you're to gonna other influence. things. Yes. You will influence the box. So yep. Stick it out. Influence. Change the world. Use everything you've ever, your whole life experience got you to this. You're in the box and see what you can do. Yeah, you bring something and, special. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, that's the thing right there. That's the bottom. Well, line. we've been talking about this for weeks about how we can take the gifts that we have and and change the world. And this is another way you're going to influence that box with the special things that you bring to it. So don't be afraid to do it, and don't leave the box. <laughs> no. God has planted you there for a reason. There's a cat. So, there's another cat. Cat's talking to us. No. Oh. What's she saying? Because I don't know. I don't speak cat. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, <laughs> see you next week. Maybe Have between, a good week. Between now and then, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be good. I will not get worse. Okay? All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>